Welcome to Chimecast, where we break through and cut the BS in sports medicine, rehabilitation, and sports performance, and talk about how things really work. All right, welcome to Chimecast. I'm Tony Mikla, Aaron Crouch. We're here with Rob Turbin today. Excited to have you, Rob. What's up? What's up? What's up, you guys? Yes, sir. Welcome, everybody, welcome. everybody watching. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. So Rob's had a, a quite an NFL career with with a few different teams. So we're going to hear about that tonight and some of his experiences and and what he's gone through as an athlete this would be great. But Rob does so much more than than just an athlete. So I'm excited to hear about what he's doing as well. He's got a football academy. I know he's got a great foundation that that gives back. He runs camps and. Uh, developmental programs for all kinds of, of youth and, and people around around the world, for that matter. So it's Absolutely. really really cool to uh, to have you here. Thanks, man. Yeah, appreciate that, man. I'm uh, I was excited for tonight. I'm looking forward to uh, chopping it up with you guys. Yeah, Love it. yeah, yeah. it'll be fun. fun. All right, so first off, beer of the night to get things started here a little bit. Yeah, we're going off with uh, Offshoot Brewery. It's uh, Unwind Hoppy Pills. So they're out of Placentia, California, which is near the Fullerton area. Um, haven't had this one actually, and it, I like it a lot. So yeah, this would be a nice one to kick the, the episode off with. So, I'm a pilsner guy. You like pilsner as well, or no? You know what? I'm not too familiar with like beers. What they uh, are? Just yeah, what they well, taste well, like? Yeah, I mean, like I know what beer is, <laughs> but but what they taste like? <laughs> not the kind you know, of sir. Yeah, <laughs> like the uh, you know all the different IPAs and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but. I'm, you know, I'm one of those type of people. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm down to, all, to try almost anything, and and so this one tastes pretty good. There we go. Like Easy beer, going. You know, yeah. Best type. It's there chill. We go. You know, I I'd have these at the barbecue. You know, or <laughs> watching some Sunday night football or something like that. There we they go. They pass the test then. Yeah. That's right then and there. Like if you can have it in a casual setting and you. Enjoy I like your yourself. name of it too. Unwind. Yeah, it's unwind. like uh, you know. It's good. Good Each day at work. Everything. Heck yeah, you know, yeah. The, the picture is catchy. I know. That is catchy. Since we can't, you know, what it looks like it looks like a like a darker version of like Johnny Bravo with black hair. It does. Doesn't he look cool. like that? Yeah. Look at this. Look at this guy. Heck yeah. Can the camera see this? Yeah. Johnny Bravo. Zoom in on that. He's chilling. <laughs> it's like his uh, <laughs> Nick Vaughn's uh, hair. Might almost. be like his cousin or something like that. Yeah, I like that. It's real good. Getting kind of red out there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But maybe a little too much sun. Right? Yeah. Right. No doubt. Um, so we've been working together for quite some time now. It's been a little over uh, one year, almost uh, one and a half. Um, it's been a it's been an awesome time working with you, and, and a very educational to be honest with you from from my end. And yes, about your football career and, and everything you've gone through, and, and certainly even deeper about the things you do for the community you came from, the community you're in right now. Um, and like Tone said, I'd love to get to that point, but. You, sh- you have a unique story being in the league and being in football that long um, where you've experienced plenty of injuries and plenty of setbacks in your, your playing career um, that I think people can learn from um, in a unique way of making certain decisions on who's in their, their corner, so to speak, and who, and you know, how you vetted out um, professionals to get what you needed from them to get to the places you're at but mm-hmm. i think from that we have to obviously hear your your story on you know a little bit of you know how, where you came from where you where you went and and kind of a little bit about your career first so yeah yeah well first i want to uh express my gratitude uh really to the both of you and you know like you mentioned we've been working you know one-on-one together for a little over uh, a year now mm-hmm. and uh in some I guess uncomfortable situations, mm-hmm. uh, obviously dealing with the business of of the league and mm-hmm. and and being a free agent, but uh, but willing to take the time out of your schedule to to be consistent with me and mm-hmm. and uh, to always make sure uh, that I'm prepared and ready to go. You know, last season I didn't get signed until literally the last week. Yeah, you know, amazing. of the season. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it, it didn't happen often. No, no, <laughs> no, no. My agent uh, at the time he says he called it a miracle. Yeah, <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> he's, he, he's talking to me on the phone. He says, "You know, I'll, I'll never say never again. You yeah. know, I'll yeah. never say never again." Uh, but a lot of guys would have checked out. You know, yeah. and, and yeah. I, you know, yeah. we, Aaron and I had those conversations. Like, you know, you know, maybe we should just, you know, essentially throw in the towel and. Mm-hmm. And then we give each other this kind of look like, 
No, no, no. We'll, Never. we'll, we'll finish it out, you know. Yep. I'm a finisher. He's a finisher. Mm -hmm. And that's why, uh, you know, we have such a great relationship. Um, man, my, you know, my, my sports history is uh, long. You know, I, I, I started playing sports at the age of eight. Baseball was my first love. I know you're a big baseball guy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I grew up in the Bay Area. So naturally, my favorite team was the Oakland A's. And my favorite player of all time is Ricky Henderson. And yeah. that was of course. Good choice. Yeah. That was a good choice. Yeah. Great choice. Yeah. 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 I'm with you. So I kind of modeled my game after that. <laughs> I wanted to butt. Uh, I wanted to, you know, bat first. I wanted to butt and get on base, still second. Yep. Still third. You know? Still yeah. all the bags. <laughs> you know? well, it was easier back in those days, you know. <laughs> Not as much. Uh, but when you had thighs like him. Right. Well, um, I wish, yeah. you know, <laughs> wasn't, I wasn't quite built that way. But I did have the speed, though. Yeah. yeah. There you, know? you go. Yeah, I was, I was pretty confident in that. Uh, then, then, you know, then a basketball uh, the following year, you know, got into my hands. And I, and I started to, you know, watch Jordan and, and Kobe, you know, some of my all-time favorite players. And then I started to play football at the age of 10. And it was it was uh, it was kind of weird how I started playing because um, at the time I was a I was a fourth grader and I lived right down the street from this park it was called Irvington Park literally like I lived on one corner and on the other corner across the street there's Irvington Park you know I mean, it's a park you know go to there you swung on the swings yeah. and all like, all this kind of stuff you played on the basketball courts. Uh, but there was always something going on on Saturdays, and it was like a crowd of people, and there was barbecues and all that kind of stuff. Now, obviously, like you know, I'm just a, a fourth grader, so I'm not going to go up there by myself, you know, to to see what's going on. I never really paid it any attention, but you'd hear people cheering and you know, cheerleaders doing like routines and stuff like that. I'm like, what the heck's going on up there? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I must find out. Yeah, so I, you know, I go to school and. And, uh, you know, I remember, you know, I went to class and one of my buddies, his name is Justin Ramos. We've known each other since kindergarten, still really good friends to this day. And, uh, you know, we started talking about Irvington Park. He says, yeah, it's a football league going on up there. And I'm like, really? Like, I, you know, I want to play, yeah. you know, like, you know, how can I play, you know? And uh, he's like, oh, you know, you got to do all the sign up and stuff like that. It's too late now. The season's already started. So the following year, you know, his parents really were the ones who kind of got all the stuff for me, the paperwork and everything like that to help me get set up. So I started playing football when I was 10 years old. I remember we had to do a tryout back in, in that day, I had to do a tryout. It was at Kennedy High School. And, uh, you know, even from the very beginning of, of my football story, uh, I was the underdog. You know, I felt like I was always kind of looked over mm -hmm. and from the start I had to have this underdog mentality because you know here we are we're doing this tryout it's it's me and maybe like I don't know maybe 25 to 30 other kids you know in this tryout and then after the tryout there's a draft um, mm -hmm. and so that's that's tough at that age that's yeah all they do a draft they do like a draft you know and, it, it, it's, like, and it's like and it's the team <laughs> and it's like the teams are like the actual NFL team. So you have the Dallas Cowboys and oh, the yeah, San Francisco. Yeah. It wasn't like the Fremont Niners. Yeah, or, yeah, you yeah. know, they, <laughs> the they tried deal. to make it like yeah. official, you know. Yeah. So you're, you're trying out because all these coaches are there. They're scouting you oh, yeah. to see, hey, you know, I think I'm going to pick that player first in the draft. And the draft was just like the league. It's like the team who was the worst team last year got to pick first in the draft. You so know? This is the Pee Wee Combine. This is yeah. popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> but seriously. Stop watches well, everything. Seriously, man. that's what it was. I mean, like, I mean it was like, and it was, it was super fun. And I felt like I was the best. Mm -hmm. Similarly to like the NFL draft, mm -hmm. where if you, you know, maybe, you know, I didn't have the highest vertical. I jumped to 36, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the longest broad jumped. I think it was a 10 flat. You know, I didn't have the fastest 40, but I ran a 4.44, four, 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 mm -hmm. which is pretty fast for a guy who's 225. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? That's and, nice. I don't uh, want to get in the way of you. Yeah. And I was like, well, <laughs> you know, I don't, I essentially don't think any of these running backs are, are better than me. But, but going back, so we do the trial, we have the draft. The first two teams that have picks in the draft are the Dallas Cowboys, mm -hmm. number one, and the Buffalo Bills, number two. And I forget who was three. So the Cowboys are up first. And I remember seeing the coaches because they got their cowboy shirts on. I remember seeing them at the club. <laughs> and uh, 
they ended up picking another kid, another running back at that, you know, over me. You know, I know the, I know the origin story. Yeah, right? why yeah. you hate the Cowboys? I know this is so great. <laughs> and and, uh, and may, you know, maybe it does stem from yeah. Atlanta because I've never <laughs> been a fan of Emmitt Smith yeah. or any of those guys. I like Michael Irvin so and I like Deion Sanders, but other than that, I can't think of any other Cowboys that I've actually been fans of. <laughs> Seriously, but uh, uh, and then I get picked second by the Bills. Uh, Joe Shammy was my first football coach ever. And uh, and I, I remember thinking, I was just like, man, like I can't believe this. Like, you know, like I looked like yeah, I wanted to be number one, yeah. you know. <laughs> and so uh, and so I had like a, a, a chip on my shoulder, and I was young too. I've, I've, I've always been like, for whatever reason, because my birthday's in December, like I've always been like the youngest kid in the class, you know. Uh, I went through puberty later than everybody else, you know what I mean? Like everybody's growing up faster than me, you know. But uh, so. You know, Joe and the Bills picked me, and uh, here I am, 10 years old. So the league was divided. You know, you had your younger division, your older division. 8 to 12 was the younger division. 12 to, I think it was 15, no, 14. You were, you were in the older division, you know. You could play, like, in Pop Warner as a freshman in high school if you wanted. Like, if you felt like you were too small, I guess. But it was like, if you're in high like, come on. Like, you're in high school now, you know, yeah. like, it's over. You know, like, yeah. let's, <laughs> let's, yeah, let's advance, you know, yeah. but some kids would do it and, you know, whatever. But, and if you were 12, it, you know, depending on your weight, was, you know, older, younger, whatever. And coach, he told me, says, you know, I've never had a 10 year old running back. Now, he was an older gentleman. This guy was already in his 50s, you know, mm. and he'd been coaching Papa Warner for a lot of years, you know, like, 20, you know, like, that's a lot for Pop Warner. It's you know? a, <laughs> a long time. Around, right? yeah. <laughs> you know, you've been around a long time. Yeah. And, uh, he's a 10 year, 10 year Pop Warner coach. Yeah. Really? You yeah. know, he's like, all my running backs have been 11 or 12 because you're a little older. Like, one year makes a difference in oh, like yeah. your at, size. At and that strength, age, yeah. yeah. You know, and, uh, and I'm like, coach, I want to be around. My favorite player is Barry Sanders, so mm -hmm. of all time. So even when I started playing football, I'm like, you know, I'm going to be the next Barry Sanders. Yes. I want to. He's like, okay, you know, I'll try you at running back as mm -hmm. a 10, 10 year old. You know, I believe to this day I was his best player ever. <laughs> uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you one quick best, story. Best steel draft pick you ever <laughs> yeah, got. I, I, best probably, I feel it. You know, probably I feel like true. I was a bad. I, I, had a really good, I had a really good 10 year old year, you know. Um, Breakout season. Yeah, yeah. So I remember we were um, picking numbers. All right. My first year. So Coach Joe, he goes, uh, what number do you want to wear? And I'm like, I want to wear number 33. You know, 33 was like, I'm like, it's a good number. You know, he's like, why do you want to wear number 33? And I said, well, I want to be the first player ever mm -hmm. to wear number 33 and make it to the Hall of Fame. And he laughed at me, you know. And I couldn't understand it. Like, I was like, what is, why, why, like, I'm serious. Yeah. Like, I'm 10, <laughs> but I'm serious. Like, Crush your dreams are your first yeah, round pick. Like, man. I want to go to the NFL. I want to be number 33. I want to make the Hall of Fame. No running back in the history has ever made it to the Hall of Fame with the number 33. Now, I think he was laughing. Well, I know he was laughing because I was, I didn't know my history well enough at that time obviously you got like tony dorsett mm -hmm. a cowboy mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. like you know strikes like, again just you know, come yeah. on man <laughs> and so he says you know what i'm gonna have you wear number 40 and i'm thinking to myself number 40 now yeah. mind you i'm a i'm a 49er fan so the first person that comes to mind if you guys can remember was oh, william right. floyd and I'm like, number 40, that's like, a, that's a, first of all, that's a fullback number. William Floyd played fullback. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you never saw any running backs really wearing 40 like that. You know, it's like 40, <laughs> like, I'd you know, be blocking people. Yeah. And like, <laughs> what is this? And he says, uh, he asked me, he says, do you know who Gail Sayers is? And I'm like, nope, I have no idea. You know, he's like, he's a famous running back for the Chicago Bears. And I said, coach, I think you're mistaken. I think you're talking about Walter Payton. Walter Payton was 32. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he laughs again. He goes, you know, you got to go back further. Mm. He says, go do your research. I don't even think Google was around at the time. I don't even know. But he's, do your research before Walter. 
there was uh, there was Gail Sears. You run like him. And I used to run like before I, I ran track and actually like learned how to like run with I used to run like like you know like head <laughs> all the way back, yeah. like chest out. Huge like, target. Just, yeah, yeah, just, <laughs> huge target. Just, you know what I mean? Like and I guess he ran similarly because he mm. was tall, long legged or whatever. So anyway, uh, that's how I got started, nice. you know, playing ball. And uh, you know, you go through and you go through your Pop Warner years. In high school was uh, such an incredible time. Probably the favorite, you know, portion of my football life was the four years I played high school and and uh, really the two years that I was on varsity. You know, those are really special, special times in your junior and senior year before you end up graduating. Um, and and those are friends that I'm still friends with to this day. Um, and so uh and you just played varsity as a junior and senior yeah i you know i was on the freshman team and uh it's funny story you know about i was young so Mm -hmm. when i was a sophomore they wanted me to play varsity our starting quarterback justin who i mentioned earlier so we ended up going to irvington together and we were together our freshman year he was our quarterback and our class you know our class we knew we were going to be special Mm -hmm. you know we're like this is going to be a special class. Irvington has never done anything, you know, historically in football. And we were really determined to change that. Like, re- like everybody was, like, on the same page. Like, we're going to turn this thing around. We're going to win. We're going to be great, you know. And uh, it was a real blessing, like, uh, to be in that time with those people. And so, JT, we have a great freshman year. Sophomore year comes around. JT goes to varsity. You know, Justin, we call him Broke JT. Up the chemistry. He goes to varsity, oh, right? Geez. And so, so I get invited to varsity, and another guy gets vi- invited to varsity. His name is Tyler Broom. Really, really special player. And Tyler says, you know what? I'm going to stay at JV, you know? And, uh, and, you know, granted, varsity needed a quarterback. Uh, and so, you know, it was my opportunity to make a decision, and it, my decision – didn't even matter because I was only 14 going into the season still. Mm-hmm. And I don't turn 15 until December and the season's over Yeah. by then, you know? So legally, I wasn't even allowed to play varsity. Gotcha. Oh, wow. and, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And right. so, because I was a 14 year old. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, you know, I end up, I end up staying at JV, but you know, we end up, you know, going to varsity the, the following year as a junior and reconnecting with JT and all of our original nice. freshman team. Nice. We go to the state championship that year. We end up losing to Los Lomas, but we end, we got an opportunity to play in the uh, the Coliseum where the Raiders play. Sweet, yeah. And uh, God, there's so many plays that I can think of in my mind <laughs> <laughs> that uh, yeah, you got you hit you hit it like a, a sensitive spot because yeah. we lost <laughs> that game by a touchdown. And I'm thinking about all the plays that happened <laughs> in that game. But you go through as an athlete so young. Uh, and you just, you, you feel invincible. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, like I never got hurt in high school or, or any time before that. Nothing serious. Sure. You no, know, you might sprain an ankle, walk it off, get stepped on or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I never got any real stingers, but you know, you, you take a couple hits where it's like, whoo, you know, you shake it off and you, I think I missed one game uh, out of the four years that I played high school. It was like a, like an oblique, like I never even knew what that was. Like something on your side. Yeah, it was like something over here can't let you run. I you know? couldn't run. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't run. So you swing your arm I, this way. You're like, why? Yeah, what's and happening? I didn't. I couldn't understand it. I'm yeah. like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, what is this? <laughs> what is I have to do with my legs. Yeah. Like, I can't. <laughs> I can't run. So I missed one game uh, because of that. Uh, but that was it. And so, um, I go to. I get a scholarship. Go to college, go to pick Utah State. I pick Utah State. You know, I I originally wanted to go to uh, Boise, but they ended up pulling their scholarship for another running back um, who actually ended up being drafted the same year I got drafted to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and had a had a really great career. Um, I can't think of his name right now, but um, you know I. I was getting recruited. I played both sides of the, sides of the ball. So, you know, teams wanted me to play, excuse me, schools. Wanted me, I guess I used to be saying teams because of the pro. But sure, yeah. schools at the college level wanted me to play defense. And I was a pretty good defensive player. But, I, you know, my, my dream 
from the from the beginning was to be a running back. I mean, I wanted to be Barry Sanders. That's who I wanted to be. Right. You know. Right. And so I said, uh, you know, I want to go to Utah State. Utah State, way back, once upon a time, was a was a good school, good team, good football team. Then, for a long time, like over the past like thirty years, I mean, they'd just been in this drought. I mean, they just weren't good, you know. And I'm like, I like that challenge right there. Now, normally kids they go to a uh, uh, I guess a lesser of a school because they feel like it gives them an opportunity to play earlier. Sure, sure. That wasn't my, that wasn't my mindset. I mean, I had to redshirt my my first year, my freshman year. Granted, it was because of an injury, but um, even in my second year, I didn't get, end up getting a starting job until my third year there. So, but I liked the aspect of a team that had this terrible. It, it reminded me of my high school because here we were when we came in as freshmen. Right. Irvington had nothing, yeah. like in the history of the school, football-wise. Mm -hmm. Nothing. No scholarships, no playoffs, no, no nothing. And our class came in, and boom, it, we completely flipped it. Went to the state championship, went to the semis our senior year, which hurts even worse than this. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that was coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, and so I'm like, Utah State, yeah. you know. And, uh, and so we, I ended up going there, you know, long story short, uh, you know, we took it, my, it took until my last year, but in 2011, I got there in 07, 2011, we got our first bowl game in 30 years of, of the school's history, you know? So, but I hit some adversity early there. That's, that's and, awesome, man, though. Yeah. Put a tremendous challenge. Like, yeah. I mean, that, you said that when you said about your freshman year in high school, I was like, man, that's. That's early to have that like vision and that that team collaboration, you know. And then to remember like leaving it or ch questioning that. That's that's cool. And then to hear it again, that's yeah. I think that's so powerful. Like uh, just being part of a team, part of a unit. Yeah. And yeah. putting that putting the team, you know, putting the team first. You know, you hear about that all the time. And by coaches in sports, but to hear at that age uh, as an athlete, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was really fortunate, lucky to have the type of coaches that I had at an early age yeah and I'll, and I'll get into my injuries in a bit but you you know you, you, you kind of hit something for me when I was a uh, everything was about the team you know from from start to finish when I was a sophomore we were and my sophomore year was was the deciding year for me saying you know what it's, it's gonna be football mm -hmm. because I, I was torn I love baseball, but I stopped playing after my eighth grade year. That was my last year playing baseball. And, and I was so torn with basketball. Basketball, I really love, I still love basketball. That's why I do the charity basketball event with the alumni every year. Um, but my sister played basketball, and she passed away when I was like six, five or six. And... You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know whether or not it was her dream or not. I think I might have been too young to, to understand that, but I just know that she played and I know that she was really good, like good enough to beat the boys. Mm. And because of that, it was like, you know, I want to, I want to be a basketball player in representation of my oldest sister. Mm. But something gravitated me towards the game of football, and I'll never forget. It was my JV year. We're playing against American High School. And at that time, that year, American High School was probably the second worst team in the division. Mission, Mission High School was the worst. They, they were always terrible. <laughs> <laughs> always. You play a mission, I was like, you knew you were going to. They were going 0 10 like every year. Maybe one, one a night. And so. We lose this game against we lose this game against uh, American, second to last game of the year, you know. And now we're not we lose this game. We're not going to be we're not even going to be five hundred for the year, you know. And I cared so much about it. I remember after the game I, I, going into the locker room and and I was fortunate to be able to be in like you know leadership positions, captain, being voted mm -hmm. captain, stuff. Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff meant a lot to me because I held myself. To, a, to such a high standard, I held everybody else to the same. And it showed in, in my work ethic and everything. And I just remember just going off on everybody, 
you know, I can't believe we just lost this game. Everybody needs to lock in. This offseason, work out, do extra work because we can never lose a game like this ever again. I was pissed. Like, I was like, eyes were tearing up, you know. And one of my good friends at the time, his name is Rashad, Rashad Miller. Also someone I've known since kindergarten, somebody that I, that I still keep in contact with. And we were, he was like my basketball, he was really my basketball friend. Like, he played football, but mm-hmm. really, like, our connection came on the basketball court, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm, and I'm looking at, I'm looking at Rashad. Rashad's like, man, calm down, calm down, man. And I looked at him. I'm like, man, fuck basketball. <laughs> All right? I'm not playing basketball well, next year. The only thing I want to do is train and get ready for next. And I meant it. I was like, All I want to do is train and get ready for next football season. And I meant that. And it was like, that's when I knew. It was like, no, no basketball didn't matter. Baseball, like, no other, like, goal or whatever that, that I was, when I was thinking about it, it didn't matter. It was like, ball and it was like boom I knew it so anyway I went off on a tangent there but I'm a storyteller <laughs> I think it's important I, am. It's, I think it's important I, 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 still, I'm, a, I am I'm a storyteller you know I, like I, I I feel like there's a lot of stories and I tell people this all the time and during the um just some rel- random free time that I have which is actually quite rare I'm not sure how it happened but I watched uh, the last dance and uh-huh. um you know you, you see Michael Jordan's story then I watched uh, like Garth Brooks documentary with with my wife and I watched like something else too but all every single one of these examples were like incredible performers at whatever um, uh, specialty it was or whatever field of uh, I don't know performance it was mm-hmm. but I noticed that every single one of them was kind of crazy in their own right but crazy yeah. for uh, being the absolute best and like just parting the water and saying like this is what's gonna happen yeah and there's nothing getting in my way. Like that, that determines someone that's going to do something probably something pretty great. Yeah. You know, is that you can't just be wishy washy about your commitment level. No, you can't be wishy washy about, you know, like what you want. Like you have to know what you want, yeah. and you have to get after yeah. it. So I think that's an important thing for people to hear from that story. One hundred percent. I tell the kids at my camp, it's like, you know, how, what does it take to be great? I said, well, first of all, if you want to be great at anything. We got to know what that is. It's like if you want to be successful at anything, well, you got you can't be successful if you don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, especially when you're young, like that's the hardest part. What do I want to do? What do I want to you know? What do I want to be in life? You know, where where do I want to make my mark? And that's okay. Like you know, for some people it takes longer than others, and that's okay. But once you're able to 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 decide that and decide for that. Mm-hmm then you're able to apply the necessary steps to take mm-hmm. in order to be the very best at it, you know, if, if, if that's your ultimate goal, yep. you know, uh, to be the best. And so, um, so anyway, you know, I get, we get through, through high school. I go to college, like I mentioned, you know, we go to our first bowl game in 30 years, and it was, it was amazing. But, you know, I hit my first uh, bit of adversity physically my freshman year, right off the bat. I, I come in as an incoming freshman as a 17 year old. Mm-hmm. I didn't turn 18 till that December, right? So I'd be playing my freshman year or as in, in college essentially as a 17 year old, mm-hmm. you know? And we're in August, it's training camp. And uh, man, I, I, I make this routine play on a, on a toss play to the right side. And I'm sprinting towards the pylon, and I remember Kyle Gallagher, who was the middle linebacker at the time, was also a freshman. We came in at the same time. He's chasing me down, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking, and I'm running, and you know, and I'm looking. And, I'm running. <laughs> and then finally, I just kind of like, just kind of dive into the end zone. Like, I know after a certain time, I'm like, okay, you know, I've got, I've got to step on it. You know, I've got to step on it. I'm going to get in. And so, you know, I just go in a dive, you know. I dove in the end zone, touchdown. We're doing a scrimmage. This is training camp. Mm-hmm. And this is the latter part of it, so we're a little bit later in August. And uh, we're jumping around, we're celebrating, you know. Easy, right? Everything, yeah. Everything's normal, you <laughs> yeah. know. I go to the sideline and I'm like, you know, it feels kind of weird, you know. But, yeah, I mean, it's like it's just my toe, you know. It's like it's nothing, nothing crazy. The next running back, it's, it's his turn, you know. I'm sure by the time it's my turn again, I'll be fine. Uh, but... Uh, for whatever reason, the like the stag like being stagnant, like standing on the sideline, like like made it worse. So I'm like, ah, maybe I need to 
like warm up again or something mm -hmm. like that. So it's my turn to get back on the field. And just as the scrimmage was going, this was a long scrimmage now that I think about it. Like, geez, how long were we out there? But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I just, it kept getting worse and worse. Yeah. You know, and, and like even watching it on film, watching practice on the film after practice, th this limp just started getting worse and worse and worse. And uh, and so, you know, scrimmage is over. I'm, I, I remember sitting on the sidelines. I'm on the bench. I'm just chilling, every, hey, high five and hey, great job. And, um, you know, I take my cleats off because the cleats are like they're, they're hurting my foot now. You know, I get up, I try to walk can't walk I mean it even hurts to have a sock on even a sock was too much pressure mm -hmm. you know and so uh, you know we're doing all these tests and we're not we're not finding anything you know uh, significant uh, that can explain what's going on uh, I tried to play you know the season starts you know uh, we're in week three against Wyoming and we're doing everything I mean like I've got like a bigger cleat on my right foot mm. than my left yeah. and we've got it padded up and and taped around you know and and uh you know we're doing everything and i, and I think back and i'm like why we're trying to do this while i'm a 17 year old freshman i don't know <laughs> i mean <laughs> we were acting good, like we're getting ready for like the super bowl yeah, or something right. like that like it's important yeah, i know i had a lot of potential but geez yeah. you know <laughs> and so yeah i remember we, we we ran a power play to the right i make a sharp cut Really not a sharp cut, but a violent, you know, cut. You know, mm -hmm. those 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 holes open and close real quickly, and it was over. I mean, it was just whatever whatever was the little bit that was holding on, it go. was done. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. Go. You know, and it took a long time to figure out uh, what was up. You know, that was that was in September, week three, October, uh, essentially goes by. And we don't really get a we don't really get a, a diagnosis until November. You know, I had to go to Salt Lake City to see a specialist, and he says you tore the capsule at the bottom of your big toe. There's, there's a ligament there that mm -hmm. that connects, and it. And he goes, uh, and I'm 17, and he goes, listen, you know, my job is to be honest, you know, with my patients, and he says, you know, I can. I can put this back together, you know, I can sew it back together, uh, but, yeah, I can't guarantee you're ever going to be able to play football again. You know, this thing has a higher percentage of ripping apart again mm -hmm. than staying together, you know, and that just ripped me apart. Oh, yeah. You know, as a 17-year-old kid, I said, are you kidding me? I'm supposed to be Barry Sanders. You know, I'm I'm supposed to be Barry yeah. Sanders, you know. Yep. I wanted to go to college. That, this is my, I, I used to tell people in high school, I said, look. I'm going to get a scholarship, I'm going to play for three years, and I'm going to go to the league. Boom. And I'm going to be Barry Sanders. Yep. That was like my ultimate goal. It's a path. You know, that was it. Yep. And yep. right off the bat, it's like, you're, wait, first of all, not only did I get injured, I've never been hurt before. I thought I was invincible. But you're going to tell me that I, you don't think I can even play ever again? That just was that that's not acceptable, you know. Yeah. yeah. And so I took that and it crushed me at first, but it inspired me, you know, uh, mostly. Um, and, you know, long story short, you know, here I am, you know, getting ready for year nine of the, of, of the NFL playing pro football. But with anything, um, especially like in sports, a reaction is so important. And, and I was able to learn that at a, at a young age. When, when really great things happen, you win a championship mm -hmm. or you break a record or you have an amazing catch or whatever it is, mm -hmm. how you respond is the most important thing. That's why coaches, when you're young, they don't really say this too much in, the, in, in pro football, but when you're young, they always say the most important play is the next play. Mm -hmm. You know, that, the last play is already over. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yep. <laughs> you know, we got we got, yep. we got yep. more stuff to do. Yep. You know, exactly. And um, and so how you respond is is most important. And it's the same on the other side. When when something uh, not so great happens, and you're hit with a little bit of that adversity, uh, the response is the most important thing. And so, uh, you know, I kept my mind on being Barry Sanders, and you know. 
I think that's important because your mentality is 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 really going to tell the story. You know, it's going to, uh, you know, I, there's a quote that says, uh, whether you, you know, think you're good or not, you're you're right. Yeah, right. Whatever you think. Yep, I you love know? that one. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know? yeah. Whatever you think is yeah. Is going to be true, uh, and so, and so, yeah. I never, I never allow my mind to be like injured, you know. Yep. Like yep. my foot was injured. Yep. We had surgery, and I got like super drugged up for the first time, which is a, a whole nother story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> first surgery ever, you know. I was acting pretty weird, yeah. uh, but we, you know, we got through it. And how did I get through that? Uh, and, and, and all my other injuries was mentality. Mm -hmm. Like the mentality that, that no matter what roadblock is up against me right now, I'm going to surpass it and I'm going to come out better from it. Yeah. And that's why after each injury, that was my first one. I tore my ACL a couple years later. I had bilateral hip surgery in 2014. You know, that the surgeries were, uh, I think they were like, 15 days apart, you know, which is abnormal. That's, that's yeah. not something yeah. you see. No, no. no. Mentality well, is huge. Yeah, even at that, in that year, that hip surgeries were, were not, were not that, that was, that was relatively new. Mm -hmm. Like the procedures were not all that, uh, so arthroscopic, I'm assuming, and that was, right. that was relatively new in the process. That's, that's really awesome yeah. to come back from that and go through that. I think that's, that concept of, of how you respond, I think, is, is everything, right? Is when you're faced with challenge, whether it be uh, whether it be injury or whatever the challenge is in life. Is there's some great great stuff on that. It's, mm -hmm. it's 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 not so much what happens to you, but it's how do you react to it? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and what what is it? The, what's your what's your perspective, and how do you go on and, and make it make improvements from it, or how do you learn from it? You know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just kind of led you down the path of being exposed to a lot of philosophies, a lot of mm -hmm. uh, suggestions from an injury rehab standpoint. Mm -hmm. And you've been all over the country, and I'm sure you've spoken to a variety of people from around the world yes. in regards to your uh, rehab process, your um, from the moment you either have surgery or the moment you have your injury to getting back to the field. What has been some of the things that you've found to be you know, um, valuable in that that time to find the people that are going to be the best resource for you. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I learned really quickly that I didn't understand at first was how much the body is connected. You know, I mentioned tearing my ACL a couple years later. It's like, well, we have to go back and look at your toe surgery in 2007 where naturally you don't have much mobility. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's healed, mm -hmm. but you still don't have as much mobility yeah. in the toe, mm -hmm. which, at, which affects the mobility in the essentially ankle, like the, the knee. And the hip. You know, it moves up the chain. Hurts. Yeah, right? exactly. All my injuries have been on the right side, you know, starting from like when I did my, my toe, yeah. you know. And it's just, it, it's weird, you know, how that how that all connects. Um, Did you do your own? So listening to a variety of different people, obviously you kind of took in a lot of information and learned mm -hmm. as much as just listening to them. You like taking, you vet your own information, right? And so understanding, you started picking people that almost started saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that influenced like who you maybe started to trust or who you started to kind of uh, follow to get you back to the way, you know, you wanted to be for your competition, I'd imagine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I've been fortunate to, to work with some really uh, intelligent people uh, who have a, uh, just a really distinct understanding of what the body is and how it works and, and how everything connects. And it's like, I don't know, for me it's like if, if you want to be great at something, if you want to be the absolute best at, at something, you know, you'll, you'll take the time to uh, really educate yourself on uh, everything that's involved. So for me, you know, like playing ball, being an athlete, the most important thing for me to understand outside of like X's and O's and mm -hmm. is your, your body. Like what, 
makes you function, like how yep. it functions out there. Like yep. How can I perform at my very best, at the highest level? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not always about like, oh, I gotta be the man in front of me. Like obviously that's a, that's a part of it, but how do I even get there? Like how do I prepare myself to even be in that moment, to have the confidence mm -hmm. In that moment, you know, how do you, where do you get your confidence? When your confidence comes from like hard work and knowing, like yourself and your body and how yeah. how it operates. Yep, explore exploring yourself, yeah. explore who you are. That's yeah. how you get to like. That's how players have like a go to move. Yep, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's the same, but it always works. Yeah. It's the same move, but it always because they're so in tune mm -hmm. with with their body, they know how to use it. They know how to make that same move work mm -hmm. every time. So like, how do you get beat by that? Well. That he works on that, yeah. you know, or she yeah. works on that. Yeah. You know? They know exactly when to use it. Yeah. Exactly when they see a few things line up, boom, now's the time. It's, just yeah, perfect it's, it's so interesting. Yeah. And so you start to learn like all of these intricate things that play into that, like uh, like prehab. Mm -hmm. Like, well, what is that? Well, that this is a way to prevent injuries. These are these are injury prevention exercises that you can do. You know, how do you, you know, how do you decide like what, what uh, 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 prehab exercises I should do? Well, that comes from evaluation mm -hmm. of the body. Are you stiff anywhere? Where, where perhaps are you less mobile at? Because uh, mobility is huge, right? Uh, some stiffness is, is important as well mm -hmm. for like, you know, speed and. Yeah, for your position as well. Other yeah. things, right? Yeah. yeah. And so being able to understand those things is, is, you know, huge, it's hugely important. Understanding that like, you know, everything comes from the core, it's the center of gravity in your body. Mm -hmm. And so regardless of how strong your shoulders are or your calves or whatever, if, if this is weak in here, if it's not tight, those things won't function uh, the way that they should. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, understanding that you know, I thought like your quads had to be really strong when I was young. You know, it's yeah. like, well, really, uh, the most important muscle as far as your lower body are the glutes, right? That go along with the core, right? That, that yeah. you know, that helps you really function everything. It just drives it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the driver. Yeah, you know, as you start to get older, you start to feel, you know, more things and if it matters to you, you want to understand why you're feeling that. There's always a reason. Sometimes it's just like, it could be you're getting older. Sometimes it's a result of prior injuries and stuff like that. But, you know, some of us, you know, we take these aches and, and things like that and we just kind of, ah, we just ignore it, you know. Right. Not understanding that. Well, you know, your knee could be hurting because of what you're eating during the day. Well, what? What do you mean? Like what, that doesn't have to do any. That doesn't have anything to do with like physical, like feeling. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm just it's eating not food. mechanical. Yeah, yeah. Right. you know. Yeah. But it's important to know that because like you may be eating something that causes yes. an inflammatory reaction in your body, and you don't even know it. Yeah. 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 Right. You may not be allergic to it, but that's how your body responds. Yeah. You know, to like I don't know, maybe it's bread or something like that, which yeah. is an inflammatory. Mm -hmm. Uh, type of food, you know, and so uh, you get to a point where you really want to understand those things, you know, and it's like, uh, you know, injuries suck, but I'm grateful for my experience with injuries and surgery because of the knowledge I've been able to build from it. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, like, you know, I can, I can really trans transform my body, you know, by not even really uh, exercising, you know, like yeah. like nutrition is is really like the key mm -hmm. to longevity, oh, yeah. you know. Put a good fuel inside the Ferrari. Yeah, you know? yeah. just be sludge. Yeah, you know, you hear this term work work smarter, not harder, right? And when you're young, you're like, you don't really know what that means, really. You know, it's like, what is, what is that? What does that mean? You know, but it's getting to know yourself. Um, as best you can, like internally. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let's wisdom. Wisdom from a veteran. You know, I, to the healthy younger in athletes out there that are quite invincible. You know, at least mm -hmm. in their own mind, and certainly they heal like superheroes. But they can take steps now, 
to you know put themselves in the best possible position you know to maximize their potential or whatever it is but if you had to give those individuals something to kind of take away from your own experiences if that if you haven't already summed it up so far it would be some mm-hmm. like some key things like this is what I wish I would have done having hindsight when I was a 16 year old 17 year old developing my body yeah um, well I will say you know these kids now in a lot of areas are really lucky because I mean there's so many gyms you know there's so many uh, opportunities to train and be around be around other kids that weren't there when, mm-hmm. when I was when I was young I, I, I remember going up to my PE teachers and asking them like hey I want to I want to get faster is, do, is there anything that you I can do do you know any exercises that I could do to help my yeah. speed yeah you know <laughs> And they typed something up, printed it out, you know, and yep. I take my dog to the park <laughs> yeah, at night and right. do those exercises on my own. So they're really lucky to have like a gym like this, uh, you know, and, and, and things like that. Um, but, you know, I, I, I wish I would have, you know, had an opportunity like, I, I want to say nutrition, but that's so hard yeah. when you're you wouldn't have listened. 16 and 17, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 19 and 20. Doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, and stuff like that. Um, but you know, the, here's the thing that I that I've always felt was really important is um, whenever you're trying to accomplish something, uh, and you know you want to be like the best at it. Uh, the most important work that you can put into it is the work that you're doing when nobody's looking, mm-hmm. when nobody's mm-hmm. watching you. Uh, when you're quote unquote not supposed to be at the gym mm-hmm. or you're not supposed to be yeah. studying, you know, um, it's uh, it's important. Have um, you seen that that Phelps commercial? I thought it was just phenomenal. Michael Phelps is an Under Armour commercial that he did, and um, it shows him training and swimming at night in the dark and everything. And basically, the tagline at the end is, it's what you do in the dark that puts you into the light. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it shows absolutely. him with all the medals and everything. It's, uh, it's a phenomenal commercial. If you haven't checked it out, check it out yeah. on YouTube. I think it's, yeah. it puts some visual to that story because yeah. that's exactly it. It's, and that's exactly what I mean, you yeah. know, um, by that, you know, and, and it really it really makes a difference. I mean, just a little bit um, um, every day separates you. And so that's what separates the good, you know, from the great. A lot of times when we're young, we're like, oh, we got practice from this time to this time. And yeah, that's what we do. We, we do the practice and do, we do what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Then we go home, we play video games, we do whatever. But, Just doing what everyone else is doing. Yeah, but if you, you know, if you take an, an extra half an hour or 45 minutes or whatever it is um, and, and, and put in an extra, it really, it really gives you an advantage. Yeah. I mean, it really separates mm-hmm. you. Uh, that's why I felt separated me the most. Yeah, and that's that's really cool. I think that translates to. I know I've read uh, some great stuff on leadership and on, on business, and it's it's they talk about that with success in business and like a CEO mindset is is in a similar category of if you were to um, to, to the, the CEO or the the, the executive leaders of that, that achieve these high levels of performance are found that their ability to stay disciplined and do the things that, that, that they don't want they know they don't want to do it but mm-hmm. they have the discipline still to do the things they don't want to do when no one is looking or in the backside to get those things done and out of the way and then discipline to continue that is what allows them to to right. continue, continue to be successful and yeah. I think that's 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 what you're speaking to is this idea of yeah. of working hard and staying staying I mean you've had tremendous focus for so long I think you said mm-hmm. that several times in your story which is mm-hmm. so tremendous and that, mm-hmm. that that clear focus of what I want to accomplish be Barry Sanders yeah mm-hmm. you know right and then and then the the fortitude to stay with it and be like hey yeah. this you know and, and every the impact that it had emotionally on several of those times right. where what team do I play for you know who do I go what college do I go to and then when I get injured I mean, every single time you spoke, how that hit you, yeah. and I, I think that that clear focus and then disciplined, disciplined action to to follow up, one hundred percent, you know, to get there is, I think, messages to take away that if you're, yeah. if you're out there and you're gray and you're, I don't really know what I want to do or where I'm going or what we're trying to accomplish, then you're probably not going to get anywhere. Yeah. yeah. But if you, as you make those decisions more clear, as we're talking about before, it's that's really starts to allow you to separate and then and then stay disciplined to, to it. Yeah, the meat and potatoes of of uh, you know just like the body in general 
and I was really fortunate. I met a young lady. Her name is Michelle Lovett. She's my dietitian even now. And I met her after I had my bilateral hip surgery. She goes, how do you eat? And she asked me. I was like, well, you know, I, I, I eat Chipotle like every day. Hell, so it is. Some veggies, <laughs> man. It's all good. <laughs> like, you can't do that. You can't do that. And she was, you know, and, 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 and uh, you know, she explained to me. She's like, you know, you should. Uh, I'm like, well, I, I've always wanted to, to be on a, like a specific mm-hmm. diet or nutrition pan, plan, but I just, I don't know where to start, you know. And like, I, you know, I, I eat some healthy things and. And that's what most people do. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they pick up a book or they get on the internet and say, oh, this is healthy. That is healthy. But, and that's true. There are certain things that are, that are healthy. Fruits generally are healthy and vegetables. But are they healthy for you? Mm-hmm. That's really the important part. Yep, what absolutely. You, mean, you know, yeah. what do you mean by that? Well, um, when I met Michelle, she's like, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to test your body. We're going to test it to see where your vitamin levels at vitamin a b c d you know um where's your cortisol levels and you know all of these other things that i had no idea i'm like what cortisol <laughs> what is that what, what are these things what are you, you know talking about? but they matter you know like yeah. how, you know how do you feel do you feel tired in the morning you know do you do you recover well after a workout you know i mean you might have a great workout but it's like you're sore for two days you can't understand why you know, for me, I had, I had, I really struggled with recovery. Like, what? You know, like, I get in the cold tub after mm-hmm. practice, you know, or, or, or the sauna, you know, mm-hmm. I get my massages. I still feel like crap. Yeah. Like, oh, what's going on? I take the, my vitamin D levels are low. Vitamin D is huge for the recovery process in your body. Mm-hmm. How do I, I would never know that if I didn't test my body out. Sure. It's a huge essential part of nutrition because, you know, it, it, it allows you to really be specific to you. Like carrots are healthy, but I can't eat carrots because I have an intolerance to it right now. Bodies, then you learn like your body consistently changes. So, you know, I may have an intolerance to carrots right now and six mm-hmm. months later, that, that could go away, Sure, you know? Yeah. Uh, but having those specifics is, is really important in determining like what intake you know, what kind of intake you're putting in your body. One of the things when I got to the pro level that I would hear a lot is that guy right there is, you know, he's really careful about what he puts in his body. Mm-hmm. You know, that mm-hmm. person, he's really careful. But what do you mean? Well, they've gotten to a point where they understand, they, they understand like what foods, what kind of proteins, mm-hmm. you know, what kind of fruits actually are, 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 are best fit for them sure. and not just eating them because they're generally healthy. It's healthy for them. Right. And so I would encourage, you know, people out there, you know, young, old or whatever, is get you know, get your body tested. Schedule it, you know, every every quarter of the year. Learn about your body. See how it's cha- how it changed. I couldn't believe I was like, wow, like, yeah. you know, last year this you know, these results were totally different. Yeah. You know, like then you start to see the improvements. Like my vitamin D level was here. It was like in the low 30s, you know, when I first did the test. I was like horrible, like, yeah. like, like death, like. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen the yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's, she's the like, oh my God, like, yeah, right. how are you even Not like good. performing? And uh, then you started, I saw, and you start to see it at 60 and, you know, all these things, right? Supplementation and everything like that, just in an intelligent way. But, uh you know, a lot of people take like multivitamins. So, like, well, you might be taking a vitamin that you don't even really need, and too much of anything is is, is bad for you. You know, so uh, get specific. Yeah. You know, you know, like specifics are really important in in taking care of your body. You feel a certain way. You're feeling something. Why is that? Is it is it is it physical? You know, I have to admit, like most of the time, it's not. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, it's. It's internal, it's nutritional, mm-hmm. but you won't know that unless you test your body blood test, swab test, whatever is right. the most uh, detailed test that you can get. Mm-hmm. And you know, that'll, that'll propel you uh, yeah. really forward. I mean, like when I started getting my nutrition right, I never felt, I always felt, I was like, dude, I feel four years younger. Like, you know, when you're doing it on a consistent basis, it's like, wow. Like it, it was the most like, 
shocking thing for me. I, I couldn't believe how much nutrition and the specifics of it really made a difference in not only how I felt, but in my performance as yeah. well. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's something you hear all the time, you know, for people like, oh, nutrition is probably 90% and then et cetera. And everybody's like, yeah, whatever, you know? Yeah. But it's so true at these elite levels of performance. And when you're, when you're at this level in the league and, and you're, you're, you're going against the best people in the world, you start to sense, like, what does it take to get that edge? And then, you know, in your case, you had a, a surgery and you kind of and met, and met her and, and that guided you down that process. But it's, it's really tremendous when you look at elite performance and the impact that nutrition has. And, and you spoke about recovery, and we talk a lot about the impact nutrition has on recovery and how those two things mm-hmm. are so closely tied. And to, to be at the, the, the conversation for the last five to six years right now in elite performance has been about ability to recover. Yeah. Whereas probably 10 to 20 years yeah. ago, the conversation was about train harder. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you doing for training? What are you doing mm-hmm. for, for strength conditioning? And, and all of these things. And that conversation has, has shifted tremendously. So like, what are you doing to recover now? Mm-hmm. And, and part of that's because we know what to do to train. Like we've learned that and, and people that's, mm-hmm. It's not easy, but there's a path of we, we know what to do. But in a similar fashion, as you said, for nutrition, there's a certain type of strength training that's right for different people. Mm-hmm. Like we happen to be on the same bicep program. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what you're doing clearly is right. working. And what I'm doing is right. it, it's the same one. These things are just stuck now. <laughs> They're like, stuck. I, I don't even have to really even lift it. Uh, so clearly, this. Yeah, right. clearly you have to be specific yeah. to, to what works for you. You were my inspiration when I started coming to this facility. <laughs> I always well, say, I always say, like with uh, with recovery, <laughs> with rehab, really, it, it falls into like uh, two categories. And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Working with a lot of uh, uh, people doing rehab and recovering from surgeries, but I think after you have surgery, uh, there is a recovery stage. I think you can get to a point where your body's recovered. Mm-hmm. You know, I tore my ACL. Eight months later, I was recovered. But I think the next stage after that is the healing process. I think it takes another eight months or another so, round of it. Yeah, really. you know, mm-hmm. for your body to actually say, "Now I'm totally." I trust. I'm he- so to speak. I'm yeah. healed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, I was fortunate because when I tore my ACL, you know, I didn't have to play that following season. Um, I had the choice. You can play. We're going to recommend that you wear a brace. Uh, but you're you're recovered enough to play. I just didn't like it. Didn't, it didn't fit. First of all, I'm not going out there with a brace on. It looks ugly. There's no <laughs> swag <laughs> in that. Well, you can't run you in know? that thing. No. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. You know? yeah. Can't be myself. No. You yeah. know, I wanted to get to a point where I could fully be me, mm-hmm. and that was to to sit out the year and allow my you know allow my knee to to totally heal. You know. And uh, I, I feel it was that way. I mean, you can come back and recover and still perform great. Mm-hmm. But most people that have surgeries, they always say, I felt better the second year yeah. than I did the first. So, so true. There's quite a bit of research on that, too. I mean, yeah. I don't know about, if you know about it. But the science side of the world is always researching the pro athletes, and you're probably in that study as far as yeah, <laughs> how, right. how the athlete felt at the two-year mark compared to at the one-year mark. And it, it is exactly that. that it's, it's, they felt normal mm-hmm. or, or recovered um, at, at that point. Whereas at one year, they're like, eh, it's, it's still not quite right, you know, mm-hmm. still unproven. So I think it's interesting perspective to hear you say it that way, that uh, to feel healed, you know, mm-hmm. by, by, the, by that second season, yeah. 16 to 24 month mark. Mm-hmm. It's, and it's so true. You know, yeah. we, we see some anomalies that, that, may, that may be different than that, but for the most part, that's, that's often the case. That's kind of how I've always felt about it. And I feel the same way with recovery that I do training. Mm. When I talk about what are you doing when nobody's looking out, obviously, like, recovery is such a strategic process as well. You want to be careful. You don't want to do too much too early. But, you know, when I was recovering from bilateral hip surgery, I was at Exos, at the Exos facility in San Diego, and I was there from, like, 8 o'clock in the morning to, like, 3 o'clock in the afternoon doing something. You know, whether it was a Norma Tech for an hour or just riding the bike slowly, you know, not doing too much too fast. But it was like I wanted to spend as much time on my body there, yeah. whether, whatever it was, it was stretching, anything for me to, to, to recover, 
you know, and not only recover, but I, to, to, to heal and, and to be able to perform at a higher level. My goal was always to come back better than I was before. And so I think in the recovery process, just as much as training, it's important to have that mindset of like, you know, how much more can I do without doing too much? Because you don't want to do too much in training either. No. You want to over right. train. Right, right, right. Because you start to get on this decline, right? right? You just start doing too much, right? Yep. So you want to train smart. You want to rehab mm-hmm. smart. But you also want to still be in that mindset of like, what is the, you know, how can I maximize mm-hmm. what I can do yeah. to heal? No, yeah. I think it's just as important when it's training, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah, 100%. We've covered so many topics today. Uh, yeah. You're like Sorry, a, I talk a, a lot. you're like a book of knowledge. <laughs> we could have like a series on you. No, oh, you guys aren't getting bored with yeah, me. Yeah, no, no, no. You know, uh, it's just tremendous amounts of value. I think for um, the the listeners and on, one from your your grit uh, to your your intense focus to kind of your experiences and how you've responded to the adversities you've faced. I think is is tremendous for people to kind of wrap their brains around. And then some of these things that. I really do wish if you're a younger viewer um, and you do aspire to be an athlete of some level, uh, take that advice and run with it to like do things before they happen. Don't be reactive in your life. Be proactive as best you can. And the amount of resources we have now is is, is insane. So yeah, yeah. Pick it. You know, pick a pick a goal. You have a dream. Pick a dream. You know, people said I, it was. I'll never forget my. I think she I think she was my history teacher but she was we we were doing this project in high school and she was like you know everybody you got to pick a career and then we had to like budget our our you know our finances you know and then pay for different things that was like the project you know and I said well shit, you know, I'm going to be a pro football player so this is going to be pretty easy for me <laughs> you know no budgeting involved <laughs> right you know like you know and uh and 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 I was serious you know, I'm like everybody. All my friends, like they know, like this is this is. You're not gonna t- you're not gonna tell a uh, you know somebody who was who was inspiring to be like a doctor or something like that. That like, you know, she told me that I needed to be more realistic about what I wanted to do in life, and I'm just like, what? You know, then it, then you know people start thinking, well, you know, only like only one percent of all high school athletes make it to the pros, and it's even less in college or whatever. And uh, and regardless of that. You know, it, it comes down to you, the individual. Yeah. What do you believe? Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I tell the kids at my camp, I said, listen, whatever your goal is, whatever your dream is, first of all, you have to identify that. Okay. Once you identify that, I think the next step, even before applying, like, the work ethic, is that you have to believe that it's attainable. You can have a, you can have a dream. I, I want to be the president. But if you like, if you only like kind of halfway believe it, it's like, you, you well, essentially, you're you're probably right, you know, mm-hmm. both sides of it, you yeah, know. It's so true. It's, it's gonna be harder to attain yeah. that that goal. But if you're like, if you really believe it, you know, it's just like I know for this is what I'm gonna do. Like this is my destiny. Like mm-hmm. then that third part comes into effect where you can like really like hone in and work hard and take all of the necessary, you know, steps. To do it and I, I i tell my kids at my camps and stuff like that like don't 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 let anybody like dictate what your future is going to be mm-hmm. what like what's attainable and what's not anything is mm-hmm. anything is possible anything is possible you just yeah, gotta absolutely. you gotta really believe it and allow it to manifest that that's uh that's hugely important yeah you know it's hugely important so i love that quote that you shared earlier that we were talking i think it's a ben franklin quote of whether you think you're right or you're wrong there it is you're right yeah yeah you know yeah. whether you think you're right or you're wrong you're right yeah you know. well rob i appreciate having you man this is yeah. awesome we're no, going to share you. uh we'll share yeah, some phenomenal. stuff on our on our site uh, and on the blog and such so you can reach uh you can you can see rob you can follow him through it through his instagram cool. and such oh, and then nice. also his his foundation the stuff that he does for mm-hmm. the community is is really tremendous to to really, I, I, th- I think to give back to to the youth and 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 other other developments in the community is pretty awesome too. Yeah, so one hundred percent. I know you got some cool stuff. We're always shooting some awesome video and 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 telling your story. So yeah. it's it's great to see. Yeah, no, giving back is important. You know, I wouldn't be here without the communities that I've been a part of. Mm-hmm. And you know, when I was growing up, there there weren't any pros around. When I went to Utah State, people used to always say you know, the guys that go on and 
play pro football, they never come back here. I heard that ever since I was a freshman, ever since I was 17, people would, I would hear that. Like, hmm. all these guys, you know, and it wasn't a whole lot, but it was like the few that, you know, they'd never come back. Only one guy, he was a, a, a corner for the Packers for nine seasons, Jarrett Bush. He'd come back and he'd actually go one-on-one against us. That was fantastic. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, I remember those moments. I remember like winning on some of those routes and really feeling good about myself. Like I just beat a pro, you know. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. And yeah. I mean, but think about yeah. what that does to the mindset yeah. of a, of a yeah. coach. That's yeah. why, like, for me, like, you know, even even now, like on Saturdays, we do our seven on seven, and I'm and I'm I'm going against the high school kids. Some of those guys are in JC. You know, I don't I don't know what what they're thinking necessarily, but you know, I I know that they're really competitive and they're embracing the opportunity to go up against a pro. I would mm-hmm. if I was 16 yeah. or whatever, and I'd be trying to shut this fool down, yeah. too. Like, yeah. I'm trying to show yeah. this fool, you know? Like, I'm 16, but I'm raw. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good, you know? I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm yeah, about to right. show you, you yeah. know? So it means a lot. It means yeah. a lot to me. That I'm like, man, you know what? The, you know, I want to be able to bring something to this community that hasn't been brought here yeah. before. And so that's why, you know, that's why I spend so much time in the community and do the charity stuff. It's, it's big time. It's huge. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah. what you've done yeah. for this region and coming to, uh, to come to the Sacramento area. I know from the Bay, and you spend a lot of time there and do a lot for that community. And this one that you live in now and the Utah State region, Absolutely. I hear about you in those areas all the time as we talk. So it's yeah. so cool. It's a lot. I appreciate that. Yeah, you stay busy with that. So that's, yeah. that's awesome. Seriously. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. COVID is... <laughs> it's its own it's thing. Everything. Yeah. We just had a meeting today because my basketball event is, is supposed to be in March. It just it got canceled this year. It's canceled for next year. You know. So now we're trying to figure out something else we can do. Yeah. Perhaps. It's so challenging to to. Yeah, I mean, one of our always our goals and as people is to unite and and have a you know and 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 help and, and improve others' lives. It's certainly what we're all about here and. It's certainly challenging to do when yeah. you're not allowed to be around each other. Yeah, right. yeah <laughs> makes it a little tricky. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. certainly creative ways, but yeah. So, but thank we'll you see. again, Rob. Yeah. It's been uh, yeah. been awesome talking to you. I, I think we have to have that. you back to talk about some more stuff. So, yeah, whatever, yeah. man. I'm, anytime. Yeah, I, I, I love doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, I'll, you guys come on my podcast, yeah. perhaps, and and you can share uh, some of your experiences and perspectives on, you know, the injuries and recovery and. I know you're a big time basketball player up in yeah. Arizona. Oh yeah, big time, big time baseball player. You <laughs> really? know, and so really. uh, I like I like hearing stuff like that. It's yeah, cool. We can teach you a few things. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, I'm always learning. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you all for watching Kimecast. We'll catch you on the next one. This was Kimecast, and we are the Kime Human Performance Institute. Thank you very much for listening. We'd love to continue the conversation with you. Please hop on our social media, it's at KimeHPI, and engage with us there. If you'd like us to feature a topic or answer any questions live on the show, post your comments there. You can also check us out on our website at KimePerformance.com, and there you can see links to content that we've posted throughout our podcast for more information.